Give, and it will be given to you. Amen. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just for a few moments, we want to speak to you from this subject, good measure. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, what you get is up to you. Amen. Yes, it is. In our text, Jesus mm. begins in the 37th verse by saying, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Now, that has been historically, at least by us folks, one of the most misunderstood, misused, and taken out of context texts, I think, in the history of the black church. Yeah. Yeah. How many times when you have tried to admonish or correct somebody, Amen. have they put their head back and said, don't judge me. <laughs> Bible said, don't judge me. Only God could judge me. But is that what Jesus is really saying? That we can't judge anybody? Or if we look at the context of the entire sentence, it says, judge not and you will not be judged. In Matthew's Gospel, it goes more into it explaining that the same judgment you get, you're going to get. So, in other words, what the text is actually saying is, it's okay to judge, but just be, just expect to be held to the same standard. You can't tell me I'm not clean, and you felt there as a alley cat. You can't tell me I got a dirty mouth when you cuss worse than a sailor. All right now. Don't tell somebody to be faithful to their husband or wife when you got a girlfriend and a boyfriend all over town. Because the same judgment you're passing on me is going to come on you. And if you're not in a position where you can take judgment, don't, Don't you? It. Amen. Amen. Say it fast. Say a word. Don't talk about somebody else having an attitude when you got the worst attitude in the church. Come on yeah. now. All right now. All right. Don't talk about gossipers mm -hmm. when your house is gossip central. It's quiet in here. <laughs> All right. Don't talk about the faults in others when that's your major one. What's the Bible go on to say? Come on, Pastor. Condemn not, you won't be condemned. We're so quick to condemn other folk and everybody else going to hell but us. But the text is saying, be careful how you sending people to hell because that actually might be your destination. Mm. Mm. I know there's nobody like that here in St. John, but have you ever been around folk where everybody's always wrong with them? Come on now, Pastor. Every time there's a disagreement or some type of conflict, they never cause it. Just like in a sermon like this, you got folk in the church again, not here at St. John. <laughs> When sermons like this are being preached, they're looking around and saying, oh, he's talking about you. But baby, no, I ain't talking about the folk around you. I'm talking about you. All right, the now. We are all works in progress. Amen. So unless you're ready to send yourself to hell, don't try to send other folk to hell. There's a way you 
can correct somebody in love. Amen. And there's a way you can correct somebody in condemnation. See, when you speak to somebody and you're condemning them, you're not giving them any hope. So why should I change? Right. I'm going to hell anyway. I might as well go to hell in style. Because <laughs> the way you talk about me, it seems like I ain't got a shot. I might as well go out, get drunk, get high, sleep in every bed that I'm invited to, and even a few I'm not. Since you're condemning me. Amen. But is there anybody that's so glad today that nobody got a heaven or a hell to put you in? Nobody but Jesus. I would say he's going to come back and judge the living and the dead. But to say don't judge, taking out of context, you make judgments all the time. That's right. We make judgments when we get into a cab or on the bus. We judge that that driver's not crazy. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. But we make, you know, you won't judge. Doesn't say judge. But it's just be what the text is really saying. Be fair with your judgment. Don't hold people to higher standards than you hold yourself. Because guess what? Your condemnation and your judgment will come right back at you in good measure. Amen. No, That's right. what I'm going to say. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. That's right. Don't you love folks? Well, I said I'm sorry. Why don't you forgive me? But they don't forgive anybody. Sometimes they even say it, but you know their heart is in it. I forgive you. <laughs> oh, I forgive you, but I ain't going to forget. And you ain't forgiven them. Well, if I forget, then maybe I'll let them do it to me again. Now, if you've got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will bring it back to your remembrance if needed. But if not needed, as we say in Brooklyn, forget about it. All right. But this forgiven and not forget means forgiven. Because you're remembering it, and as long as you're remembering it, some part of you is still angry. Amen. Oh, can I get a witness in here? Amen. Because every time you think about it, you get mad. Come on, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. That's why you said you forgave her, but every time you see her in church, you come. Cut your eyes. The problem with that is, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Mm -hmm. By God or anybody else. Because you can't get on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me, when you're carrying unforgiveness in your own heart. God's not even hearing that prayer. God's ignoring it. So your slate has not been wiped clean. It's still a mess. Praise the Lord. I need somebody to please usher. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I need Sister Minnie can't do it by herself. Yeah, she needs some help. Praise the Lord. She can't. And you notice unforgiving people want to be forgiven quickly. Huh? And I'll quote Bible on you. The Bible says you gotta forgive me. But you forget that when it comes to you. Huh? Pastor. Mm. And then you throw in, well, God ain't finished with me yet. <laughs> that, and that could be very well true, but be willing to accept the consequences of not forgiving someone. That you remain unforgiven. Amen. When blessings don't come your way, understand, that's the consequences of God and I finish with me. Say it. Paul 
pick this up and put it in the boat. It said, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. Like an old lady once said, some of us act like God's a coconut. And don't hear or see what's up. God hears and sees everything. You can close the door, you can turn off the light. Maybe we can't get in and we can't hear and we can see, but guess what? Turn closing the door, you can lock it, triple lock it, and turn off all the light. But the Lord is still there because he's omnipresent. Yes. And he don't need light to see because he is the light. Amen. Amen. Give, and it will be given unto you. Yes. Now, preachers love to use this text for offering. Give and it will be given unto you. So come on, bring your money and it's going to be given unto you. But in the context, this text is much more universal. If you give judgment, it will be given unto you. Mm. If you give condemnation, it will be given unto you. If you give forgiveness, forgiveness will be given unto you. If you give love, love will be given unto you. If you give peace, peace will be given unto you. If you give mercy, mercy will be given unto you. Amen. If you give kindness, kindness will be given unto you. If you give understanding, understanding will be given unto you. And yes, one couldn't even include monetary gifts. If you're a giving person of your resources, God will make sure that it's given back to you. Amen. <clears throat> and not all, any old kind of way, but in good measure. Yes. How many know you can't beat God in giving righteousness? Right. Amen. Whether it's giving kindness. Understanding, love, or even money. You can't beat God giving this. He'll make sure that it comes back to you what? In good measure. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And the text says, press down and shake it together. What happens if you compress something really, really tight? Mm -hmm. And then you let it go. Yes. Amen. It expands. What happens when you take a carbonated drink and you shake it up mm -hmm. real good and then you open it? It overflows. It runs over. Hallelujah. And you don't have to search for it. Whether it's good or bad. Amen. Amen. Because what you get is up to you, honey. If you if you if you're giving those things that are good, expect good things to come to you. But if you give those things that are evil, expect evil to come to you. Amen. And you don't have to look for it. You don't have to search for it. It'll be dropped right into your lap. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Teach. Teach. Oh, the message you give. Is the message you've all received. Yes. I'm about to shock when evil comes on us. Mm. But look how you treated somebody last week. Amen. Look how you talked to somebody just yesterday. Why are you surprised? Mm -hmm. God said he'll lay it in your lap. But honey, if you be nothing but a blessing, to your brothers and sisters in the law, to the people in your community, if you're making a difference, just expect a huge blessing to be laid and dropped right in your lap. You ain't got to look for it. You ain't got to beg God for it. All you got to do is keep living right. And if you're living right, living according to the word of God, turn to somebody and say it's coming right back to you. Press down. Shake it together and run it over, and it's about to be dropped right into your lap. Right. 
Or it may not come today, and it may not come tomorrow. But how many know that payday, it was coming soon. Just keep on living. Payday is coming soon. And when it comes, it's coming in good measure. God is not going to shortchange us. Hallelujah. And those of us that have been living evil and living ratchet, but it ain't come yet. Hallelujah. That's just God's mercy. Waiting for us to get right. But after a while, God says, the only way my son or my daughter is that they learn their lesson. I gotta let it come back to them. Hallelujah. So if you're a gossiper, don't be surprised when the next biggest topic of gossip is all about you. Don't be surprised if you're evil and deep and unforgiving. And it seems like every door you try to walk through. is able to change our hearts, to change our attitudes, to change our minds. For the Bible says that anyone that's in Christ is a new creation. We all just pray.